Welcome to a Football Friday, part one. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn the first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little housekeeping. YouTube support has been amazing. I'd love to keep all of those subscribers and have them download the audio version wherever you get your podcast. Equally as important to help the Locked On UConn audience grow. So if you can do me two quick favors, first click that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen, then head over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. This way it helps all of us know that we have a larger community at, at large with, with Locked On UConn. And then even as we add the football stuff, can't tell you how much that support means to me. It's everything. Please add a five-star review if you can. Those good reviews are immeasurable for the help and health of the program. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. When the sports aren't, as the playoffs are winding down, the sports aren't sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking us all up, customers in, with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, just so you guys know, this is obviously a recorded show, so I will tell you that we have a two-part Football Friday, today the 16th and then the following week the 23rd. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the UConn football preview coming up now. Well, we've been talking about this project for about a month now. Um, we got the guys from the TNT College Football Podcast to come on and be our resident UConn experts in not college basketball, college football. So I want to bring in Bobby and Pete. Let's do it right now. And welcome guys to the show. And I have a very important question to ask because as we know that in college football, in any level of football, I feel like you only go as far as your quarterback. And I want to go to Bobby first and let's go around the horn. Talk to me about Nick Evers. You know, he's a former four-star recruit, um, you know, a couple stops already. What what do you like about him? What can UConn fans expect from their new starting quarterback? <clears throat> well, Nick is a uh, very talented. Um, he's a dual threat guy. Has really really good ability when it comes to uh, the RPO game. I, I think that that could be a really really good asset for us uh, this season if that's something we're looking to implement, which I certainly think we will. Uh, but Nick has a really strong arm. He, he, he showcased that while he was in high school. Um, really good touch on the deep ball. Um, and, and I think Husky fans are really, really going to like what he can do on the football field um, as he has the dynamics to do more than one thing as a quarterback. With Like I said, he can do their RPO stuff. He has great touch. And uh, it, I think fans are going to be really, really excited about it. Pete, what what do you do? You agree with that? Do you feel like um, you think it's going to be heavily on the RPO, or you think it's going to be more uh, kind of a mixed bag where you know he's he's kind of setting up some run plays himself? Or how how, how do you think the how do you think Gordon Samus is going to run this offense? I think Gordon is going to open it up a little bit more. Um, I think he's going to stick to some fundamental um, tenets of the last year's offense in terms of trying to run the ball, trying to run specifically with the outside zone. Um, because that was their bread and butter and staple within the past two years. But I think also because of the change in, in lineups and offensive line and with the type of running backs we have, the different types of bodies and different types of running styles, he's going to probably try to incorporate more downhill running, more pin pull type action within the offense, particularly maybe on counters. Now that you have, uh, you know, more quicker guys in uh, such as Darrell Robinson who transferred in from Charlotte. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of Nick, um, I, I can see him, you know, implementing pocket passing as well as the RPO game. Uh, we have receivers as well that um, have played in big time conferences, um, pretty much know how to get open in small spaces, catching small spaces in small windows. So there's going to be more of an aggressive tone, I think, with the passing game and then trusting that to someone like Nick, who showed you know really good ability to pass in the pocket, uh, as Bobby alluded to before. You know, pat, you know, using his legs and to improv when you know plays break down. So I think fans are going to be uh, really interested to see 
what Nick Eckers, Evers can offer in the offense. Let me ask you guys this question because I think this is I think this is almost any whether you know when I'm doing more college basketball when a guy transfers in, everyone always wonders what happened in the other places. So, what do you think from your guys' perspective when you've done a little research on Nick? Was there something that coaches thought was a red flag? Was it injuries? Just you know, just did it just not work out? Maybe not the type of offense he wanted to run. What attracted him to come to UConn and and kind of what can we expect from that perspective? You think he's the type of guy that you can build a you know competitive football team around? Open ended. Whoever wants to go first. Um, the rumors were that he had a hard time picking up offenses. Um, but that's any young quarterback. I mean. Any, any, no matter how t- highly touted you you are, unless you come from like a, a football pedigree family like the Mannings, you're going to have struggles picking up offenses, and just you know, particularly at quarterback, it takes repetition in order to pick up things and to pick up nuances of coverages. I mean, if you got bigger, faster, stronger players, you're playing against the defense as well. You know, the scout team defenses that you normally face in college, even if you're a freshman, there are still starters in their high school ranks, other other places, so. You know, those kinds of adjustments, no matter what level you are, you go through. Um, and, you know, on top of it as well, and probably Bobby will allude to this better, you know, he faced some pretty good talent that happened to just transfer into those places that he was at before. Sure. What do you think, Bobby? Right. Like like Pete said, I mean, he goes to Oklahoma and he's – Dylan Gabriel's there. I mean, he's a, he was fantastic. Um, had a really, really good run there. Now he's since transferred to Oregon. Um, and then he goes to Wisconsin. And he's got a battle with uh, Tanner Mordecai, who had a tremendous season the year before at SMU. Um, so he's he's had a battle against some really talented players uh, at, at those institutions that he was at. Uh, I'm sure the reason he comes to UConn is an opportunity to play, play right away. And, and I, I would, obviously he's going to have that opportunity here. Yeah. Bobby, let me ask you this question because, it. yeah, I mean, and here it, oh, that's that was my next question: is he is he the is he in or or is there a potential for one of the other guys to take his spot? I'll personally say, a lot of the prognosticators, Phil Steele, a couple of the others, are, have have said Joe Fagano could be the or they think he'll be the week one starter. Yeah, I personally okay. can see. I personally can see that uh, just because of his – he's been here. He, he knows the system. And I understand we have a new offensive coordinator, but there's going to be a lot of similarities, I imagine. Um, I, there's no doubt, in my opinion, that Nick is the more that, – that he has the more upside, probably more talented. Um, but he's only completed one pass since high school. So he's got he's got yeah. a lot of – a lot, of, a lot of rust, I, you could say, um, but he's very, very talented. What about you, Pete? What do you think? There's certainly more arm talent in that whole quarterback room than there has been probably in the past decade. Um, you have Joe Fagnano, who's been a starter at the FCS level. He started a couple of games for us last year. You have Tucker McDonald in there. Um, I think who's a very underrated recruit. Um, he's definitely got some arm talent. Um as to where the whereabouts as to why, you know, he might have more trouble moving up the depth chart. It's just like I said, there's a lot of talent there. And then you, you know, you place in Cole Well Cole Welliver, another incoming freshman who is coming in from Texas, uh, big six six gunslinger. Um, so you know, a lot of competition, a lot of uh a lot of guys that want to play one spot. So it's definitely gonna be a battle. And I think you know, anytime you have good competition in one spot, it's just going to elevate everybody's play, including Nick's. And so, um, you know, to the best man goes to spoil, so to speak. So we're going to see, you know, who's going to want it more, who's going to earn it in camp. For sure. Um, fun, fun question for you both. Uh, Pete, you answer first. And this is this is assuming I don't play video games, but you guys know that there's that NCAA 25 game that everyone loves. Right. And everyone's jumping on with UConn and trying to build their dynasty and all that stuff. If you have control of this team and it's just in a virtual situation, you're not the coach of the team. Who are you starting? Like, who's who are you taking for the video game scenario to to lead your Huskies in that in that fantasy world? The guy that can make plays. <laughs> but who's that for you? Do you think it? You think it's Nick, or do you think it's you think it's Joe, or do you think it's Tucker or somebody else? 
I mean, off a of projection, yeah. it looks like it's Nick. Okay. Um, but, you know, I've seen clips of Tucker McDonald, honestly, making some pretty impressive throws. I, I haven't seen enough of him, but. Sure, sure. The little, little snippets I have seen, I'm just, you know, he does pop. I mean. Okay. So, you know, what, you know, how he reads defenses, you know, the timing is with his routes and other aspects of the passing game, I, I have not seen. Um, but I would say, you know, the guy with, with the most upside is, is Nick Evers. And, you know, honestly, you know, as a coaching rule, I, I learned this from, uh, you know, Jack Cochran when I first started uh, coaching football. And if anybody knows in Connecticut who, who that guy is, he's one of the winningest coaches in high school history in state in the state of Yukon, in state of Connecticut, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, his rule was if it's even the younger player starts. So, okay. Um, you know, and Nick's the younger guy. He's got more upside. He's got more years available. So if it's even, I say she, he, sh he should start. What about you, Bobby? That's, that, I like that take, Pete. If, if I'm talking just from the video game perspective, I look back at myself when I was 12, 13, 14 years old playing the video game. And I, I always wanted to be like Vince Young or have the running quarterback running the option. Yeah. Fun with that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take Nick just because of his running ability, just because. To me, playing those games when I was younger, it was always fun to have your quarterback running all over the place. For sure. And honestly, guys, like whether bringing you guys into this is is what I want. Like I, I want these I want you guys to kind of give me that expert opinion. But it, my my take on this, if if we're looking at eligibility, if you're looking at a guy that has been all over the place already and he's got, you know, three years of eligibility, it's it's no different in any program. You don't you don't transfer a guy in that has that ability to, to have him sit. You know what I mean? Right. Like that to me is is the biggest uh, kind of like aha moment. Whether you whether you follow UConn football or not, this kid is the most talented. If you're running a new offense and you're you're kind of starting fresh, so to speak, um, it would honestly it would make no sense unless unless you're giving it to Tucker Mark, Tucker McDonald as a freshman, which is also kind of a maybe a silly one. But you know, I think I think you gotta kind of give it to Nick, but. We're gonna we're gonna talk about no matter who the quarterback is, you still got to protect him. And we're, I want to I want to hear your guys' take on this O line and this remake offensive line. We got a lot of transfers. Uh, we're talking a little bit about it pre-show, so um, we'll talk about that coming up after this. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone all day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Hey, Husky fans. Fall is here. Yes, it's coming. You know what that means. College football is back. I think we're nine days away. And just in time, I've got some awesome news. I'm thrilled to be working with Homefield Apparel. They just launched their Can't Miss Kickoff 2024 campaign. And let me tell you, it's everything you need to gear up for the season. I've got a Homefield football box coming as part of a larger order, including the Yukon Interlock logo joggers and the 1999 championship tee. I can't wait to rock these vintage designs all season long. Trust me. The quality is unmatched. The shirt I'm wearing right now, Homefield Apparel. Homefield specializes in incredible comfort. And trust me, this is an incredibly comfy hoodie. Officially licensed apparel with vintage college designs. And they've got over 180 schools to choose from. But let's be honest, you're only worried about the beloved UConn. But the highlight, their football boxes. These boxes are packed with three exclusive never before seat items from your school that you can't wear, can't get anywhere else. And for the true VIPs, they're offering even more exclusive hats, koozies and a platinum pass for early access to all your school's releases these boxes drop august 9th they already did at 10 a.m but heads up they're super limited and will sell out fast so if you want to stand out in the stands and show off your husky pride head over to homefieldapparel.com grab your gear and get ready for an epic season let's make this fall unforgettable all right we're back uh locked on uconn football friday we got pete callan bobby wilson uh, from the TNT College Football Podcast, our college football experts on UConn, all things UConn football. Um, all right, guys, we just had a you know a pretty good, robust conversation around this around this uh, this quarterback room. Who's protecting this guy? Whoever it is, whether it's Nick, whether it's Tucker, whether it's Joe, um, you know, give me give me your projections. 
do do we have some? You know, we talked about there's more talent. I think Pete said there's more talent in this quarterback room than there's been in years. Do we have a talented offensive line, or is it going to be a long year for whoever is behind center? It's going to be dependent upon who fills in in the interior three. Uh, we lost two very good ones in um, – Oh gosh, why am I drawing a blank? In um Christian Haynes. Christian. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And uh second round and, pick, right? Yeah. And um oh gosh, man. I'm so Noel. Noel. There we go. They were they were the two guys. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, with with pro football focus, they were the two one of, one of the top five tandems, guard tandems in the country last year routinely. Uh, grading out in the top five of all of college football. So you're losing those two. Um, Yukari Walker transferred to Colorado. So, you know, if you want to make a quarterback comfortable, you want to, you know, protect his interior, um, the guys that uh, can't rush into his face. So, you know, whether, you know, Chris Fortin is projected to be at center. Uh, Ja'Kai Green is most likely uh, – Starter at guard, um, transfer from Charlotte um, with the injury uh, to Jack Stewart. Uh, Kyle Jurgens is projected to start at the left guard, and then you know you rock solid on the edges with Valentin Sen and uh, Chase Lunt. So, and those are two guys that are, I think, Bobby. They're in the uh, Shrine Bowl one thousand. That's Shrine right. one, yep. Shrine one thousand, yep. So you know. The edges are going to be protected. They're going to be in good hands. So it's going to be a matter of who who the interior three are and how they rise up to the occasion. Bobby, before I get your analysis, thanks thanks for that, Pete. Um, do you, do you feel like with Gordon Samus being uh, an offensive line coach, do you feel like he's going to, you know, utilize more? I don't want to say more technique because obviously you're an offensive coordinator. You're going to you know run your offense no matter what. Do you think they're going to do more? Um, try to do more inside running off, you know, with maybe from zone reads that to kind of take some pressure off of Nick uh, to kind of help this offensive line a little bit, maybe some more play action, you know, you know, dumping it off to tight ends, just, uh, you know, with an inexperienced offensive line, you need that chemistry to, to pop. Do you think that's, that's going to be an initial concern? Like maybe with the first couple of games is just the chemistry with injuries, new guys coming in. Uh, How do you, how do you see him working that out? Potentially, I could potentially see that for sure. I mean, we got, like Pete said, our, our two tackles, Chase and Valentin, are, are studs. We got two really, really good ones there to anchor uh, anchor us there. Um, Chase has a real shot of being drafted this upcoming year. Um, but but the, like Pete said, the interior guys is going to take it, take some time to, to gel and get cohesion there. So I can definitely see them implementing that inside, inside zone or different running uh, schemes that we've done in the done in the past that we've been very successful with. I think that that's going to be something that we lean on heavily uh, just because we've been great at it. Um, Pete, let me ask you this question. Um, and Bobby, you can answer it too. I, I'm, I'm curious, but both of your, your thoughts on this, knowing football, but not knowing kind of the ins and outs of how an offensive line is, is made or how they gel. Do you, when you have an inexperienced offensive line, do you pull guards more when you're trying to create more running lanes, or do you just straight block and, and kind of get the gaps blocked the way it's supposed to be done? What's what's easier for guys to pick up to kind of get that cohesion? The easiest thing to do is see man, go after man, hit man. Yeah. So within the straight as line as possible and straightforward as possible. So I'm pretty sure. Gordon would like to lather them up, so to speak, but just sending them downhill and see what yeah. they can do to block people in front of them. Now, that's going to be all dependent upon the individual strength, footwork, quickness of the guys in front, particularly at the guard spots, because those are usually the guys that are the mo- some of the most athletic guys you have along the offensive line. Um, pulling is a, a different aspect just because you, you know, a lot, not a lot of people pull linemen much anymore with the sweep game, just because the line, you know, defenses are so fast now. Fair and enough. They shoot gaps before the play even gets downhill, so you got to be selective in the way you you run those types of plays. But you know, that's been substituted by the outside zone where you have you know 
who Christian Haynes last year called elephants on parade. <laughs> and so um, if you can do that and execute as a group of five, um, you're going to have a good shot. Uh, the good thing about this whole group is that they have a consistent coach and coach Samus. He's the same guy's been there. Yep. So I would say, you know, with, and with everything we've heard, I mean, Bobby and I just did an interview with Andy Baylock you know, this past weekend, who's been there 61 years. He says he's, he's as good an offensive line as line coaches as, as he's ever seen there. So, I think they're in good hands and it's going to be a matter of, you know, how they work with each other and how they, you know, become cohesive by game one. Bobby, anything to add? I agree. I've heard the same as well. And then from a national standpoint, um, Coach Samus has held high regard as an offensive line coach. Obviously, it's his first year as an offensive coordinator, and I think he's, he's going to do some good things there. But uh, I know just from speaking in the – national circles that I'm a part of that Sam has held in a high regard there. Uh, and then the, I guess the only other thing I would add is uh, Ja'Kai Green, the transfer from Charlotte, he did start eight games at Charlotte last year. Yep. So that there, there is, there, it's not like he's coming in cold. I mean, obviously they have to gel and come together as a unit here, but uh, this is a young man who's played significant games at the college level. One thing I will add from my perspective is if you're a coach at any sport at the Virginia Military Institute, you coach. There's no thrills. There's no frills. You are there to coach. And in his case, football. And in that case, he was responsible for the running game and pass protection plans for a tempo run pass option. Um, I feel pretty good about Coach Samus because of that. Because all I know is, is that even at the college basketball level, guys who go from VMI to High, high major programs are very successful. Uh, so uh, that to me was when I when I read about his his background, that was like, OK, that's enough for me. That Because if you've ever been to Lexington, uh, Virginia, they ain't nothing to do. So uh, there's, there's only, only, you're only working on you're only working on your craft. So my man is is ready to roll. And he developed an all-American wide receiver when he ran that offense, too. So that's even more impressive because VMI is not known for passing the ball at all. VMI is known for hard work. That's it. Right. And that's a good thing. Like that, I'm, I'm not minimizing it. You know, these, these kids work their butts off. They work their tails off. So um, no, it's a great perspective, guys. I want to hear about, you know, we're going to talk about something sexy, weapons on offense. We're going to do that coming up after this. Summer in baseball, there's nothing like it. I remember catching a game last summer and the energy was electric. If you're like me and love hitting MLB games, Game time is the app you need. It's the official ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. And here's the best part. The closer you get to first pitch, the lower the prices go. Who knows? You could have been one of your first games, would have, could have been at U.S. Cellular Field and watch Aaron Judge hit it the fastest 300th home run in Major League Baseball history. Took him 187 less games than, I believe, Ralph Kiner. So I've used game time to grab last minute tickets and it's a game changer. You can see the view from your seat before you buy and with, with their all in ticket pricing. There are no hidden fees. Plus they have a guaranteed lowest price. So, you know, you're getting the best deal. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets, download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Trust me. You don't want to miss out game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Go check it out. All right, we're back locked on UConn. Something to, to bring up, guys, if you're listening to this for the first time and you're like, man, you guys are talking football. This is awesome. Um, I'd love to go to a game this year. We have two tickets that we are giving away for the home opener against Merrimack September 7th. Here's how you enter. You have to pay attention. You can go back. This is going to be recorded, so you can pay attention to this. You have to follow me on X or Twitter. You have to follow Bobby on Twitter, and you have to follow Pete on Twitter. You also have to subscribe to the Locked On UConn podcast, and you have to subscribe to the TNT football college football podcast. I know that seems like a lot, but you get two free tickets and a parking pass. It's definitely worth a little bit extra legwork. I will announce the winners. If you do all of that and you send me a screenshot to my DMs with all of the things that you, I just mentioned, follow all three of us. Follow the Locked On UConn podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to it. And you subscribe to uh, Bobby in, in Pete's TNT college football podcast. You're in and you get a number and then we go. I mean, heck, if you do it and only 10 people sign up, you got a one in 10 chance to win. So I, I hope we get a lot more. We want to give away these tickets and I'll announce the winner on September, uh, September, August 24th for a September 7th game. 
I'll get you those tickets transferred uh, it's from a, an alumni. And it is also going to get a parking pass. That's probably going to come a lot later, closer to the game time. So don't worry about it. We'll get you those to that parking pass too. So that's good stuff. We'll talk about it as, as it gets closer. But um, what will they see on offense as far as weapons? We talked about the old line. We talked about the quarterback. If they get these tickets, who are who are the weapons on offense? I, I know we got a multi multi talented running back room. We got new wide receivers. We got guys that have come back. Um, what what jumps out at you right away, uh, Bobby? You go first. Like, what's the first thing that jumps out on you on this offense, other than what we just talked about? Well, our, our running game obviously is what jumps off first, just because we've been very very successful with that. We got two good ones, homegrown guys, and Cam Edwards and Victor Rosa. And we've also added a couple of pieces that are that are going to be exciting. And Pete mentioned Darrell Robinson from Charlotte coming in, and then uh, Mel Brown from Gardner Webb uh, joining as well. Uh, Brown is super fast, uh, really really quick feet. Uh, I, I could see him potentially being utilized in the in the return game as well potentially. But we have some other guys that could do that as well uh, from the wide receiver perspective that we've added. Um, TJ Sheffield coming in from Purdue, really, really, really tough, hard-nosed guy that makes really tough catches on third downs. He's done it for a while now at Purdue at, the high, at a very high level. I remember I was at a game a few years ago, Penn State against Purdue. He made at least two third down catches that were very, very tough against a very, very good Penn State defense in that game. Uh, you got Skylar Bell coming in from Wisconsin. He had a very productive uh, season in 2022 there. Uh, Josiah Gavings from Akron. He was second team all Mac last season. Akron didn't have a very much team success, but he had a very, very good year himself. Um, the UConn uh, X Twitter account today put out a, a clip of him catching a deep ball where he dove and made a fantastic catch uh, that Joe threw. Uh, then Brett Buckman returning. He's a really solid, I don't want to call him a possession receiver because I feel like that's disrespectful, but he he makes the the tough catches as well. When you need a when you need a tough catch, he's gonna he's that guy that you want to make that catch. And um, like I said, we as Raya Anderson is another transfer we picked up, six five from yeah. uh, from Campbell. He's Obviously, you see six five, and you think, "Wow, well, he can throw fades in the in the end zone now." So, <laughs> it's another guy that we can just uh, find and, and have fun. I remember my days playing. Playing, I had a I had a, a six eight receiver to throw it up to. So those are fun uh, when you have a guy like that. Uh, we also added Shamar Porter from Kentucky. He's one of the highest ranked recruits from a. Uh, from his high school days that we've ever had in program history. He's a four-star kid, very, very talented guy. Kylish Hicks is another playmaker at the receiver position that could, uh, that is good in the deep ball situation. So I think this is one of, the, this is probably the first time where we can sit there and say like, we have some, one, we got some big receivers that we're very, very comfortable with, but it's just a really, really good group of receivers that we're comfortable with and in many different situations. And we'll still be really, really happy with our running backs, just like we've been the past couple of years. Pete, same question, do you, but I'm going to give it a little twist to it. Do, of, of, of what Bobby said, um, of all of the guys he just mentioned, do we have any dogs? Do we got any Orez? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you uh, my favorite favorite quote. I'm sorry. I'm a basketball guy, so I always bring it back to basketball. The great Jerry West. He just passed away. He said, "I I, I was a wolf. I eat dogs for for breakfast." Right. So, do we have any wolves on this team? We got any huskies that are gonna bark a little bit, or do you feel like it's just a, a collection of dudes that are fighting real hard? Is, or is there one guy that really stands out? I'm curious. I think T.J. Sheffield stood out to me. With all the players that we reviewed this past uh, summer and past spring during the signing period, I remember during one of our shows, I I kind of called him a poor man's Heinz Ward. Okay. It's pretty high praise. He would just get open, sometimes not by a lot, but the quarterback would put the ball in the air anyway, and he'd find a way to come up and come up with the catch in tight windows. 
yep. would move the chains for first downs, which is someone I would consider a dog at the receiver spot, especially when, you know, when you're playing in a run-oriented offense. You need someone that can move the chains. And yep, um, absolutely. I think even with – you know, you know, all fairness with Justin Jolie last year, I think he was inconsistent in being that guy and moving the chains. Whereas, you know, you need a guy that just knows he's going to come down with the ball. He's not going to, you know, drop passes and he's going to move the chains. And TJ seemed to be that guy for, you know, in Purdue, for Purdue in, in certain spots. Um, other than that, we got a lot of guys that I think have good athletic ability and are hungry, which is very positive. So, one of them is going to, you know, you know, maybe rise to the top. I mean, I think Josiah Gay things too also look pretty impressive in terms of getting after balls a little bit when he, in it during his time at Akron, you know, just putting the effort he did on a not so good team. So um, those are the guys that will stand out to me most in terms of if you want to guys that are going to fight for the ball and, and be dogs, so to speak, but I'm pretty yeah. sure they're going to be more people that rise up and, uh, you know, want to want the ball and, and want to get open with the quarterbacks that we have in that in that quarterback room. Before I get to my next question, I'm going to ask Pete this again because he's a he's a former UConn DB. Who who would you not want to go up against in this in this group? Who would you be like? Damn, I got to don't, I, don't ask me that question. There wouldn't be anybody. <laughs> I wouldn't face. Sorry. I, I, I do. Yeah, I do. Know, know. All of them. If I'm if I'm in front of them, all of them are going down. I mean, so oh, that's, that's great. I mean, I, I love that you know, answer. That's why I asked. You know, no, no one scares me. No, no one damn, me. I like that. All right, Pete, no. calm down, man. Calm down. No, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, you got to understand something. You know, during the pre-show pre-recording, you said how big you were. I was I was five ten. You know, one seventy five, and I yeah. played strong safety against guys that were 260 i couldn't afford to back down anybody so you know you know you see you know evidence in nature of you know little creatures you know being small but they'll tear you up you know that's how i was on the field so i like it i like it you, know. you got any eligibility left no nah, man i'm done <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it i love it I'm done, Bobby, but that mentality to- never goes man you know uh, oh I I listen, man. Uh, I don't care what sport it is. You're you're 100 right. Uh, I, I'm right there with you. Um, let me ask you this question, Bobby. Answer this one first. A quarterback's best friend is a reliable receiver, but sometimes it's a tight end. Do we have a your safety valve tight end for whoever is the starting quarterback? I, I think that's yet to be determined. Uh, okay. We got three guys and Louis Hanson. Big kid, um, then Nick Harris and Alex Honing. Both, all three guys are big. I mean, they're six six, six five. Hanson was at Michigan. Honing was at TCU. Um, so, I mean, they, they have pedigree. Um, and we have a true freshman, Dominic Toy, who I think in the future is going to be really, really talented. I, I've the kid has has skill. Um, I, I don't know if he's if he's going to see the field much this year. There's a lot there, and there's a lot to like. Um, you know what that, like t- said, you know what that, it's kind of you know what that tells me. You know what that tells me, Bobby, is that Gordon's like we're we're not passing to a lot of tight ends. We're they're they're staying in the block. <laughs> they're all they're they're all that big. I mean, totally cool leak out. I don't think you're going to see a lot of seam passes up the middle to tight ends, but that could be you know to be determined. Maybe on some play action. Yeah, I mean it, it, we. It, none of them are like Justin Jolie last year where they were the springy athletic type of guys. They're, they're bigger guys. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it, but uh, a toy would be the closest to that, I would say. But uh, the other three guys, I mean, yeah, they're, they're bigger. I could see him being the more of the blocking type like they've been in the past, but at the same time, like short passes out of the backfield, I could really see them being productive. I want to add. I want to add to. They can Please. still affect the passing game in this respect. Um, if they are more blockers, that's another guy that you can put on along the line to create an extra gap that the defense Absolutely. has to be responsible for, and that's going to draw up defensive backs, particularly safety. So, if you get good at creating those extra gaps, you know, making seams in the front seven and, and, and gashing them in the run game, that's just going, going to come a time where that defense has to make a decision to come in an extra player to stop it. And that's what can free up the receivers that you've recruited in 
and place them in one-on-one -on -one situations to, to open up the passing game. So they can affect the passing game in that way. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't disagree. Um, I, I don't, I don't think there's any George Kittles on the team, but I know George Kittle likes to get get his nose dirt and dirty and block uh, in, in that in that passing and running game. So, to totally agree. Um, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that because I don't know for some reason I've always drawn to tight ends and kind of their their skill set because they are they're kind of a mixture of an O line and in a receiver. You know, you got you got to be a big guy, but you got to have a little bit of a little bit of wiggle to to kind of to kind of get open and everything that goes with it. So I'm curious to see. Who will who will be that? Um, maybe there's more than one. Maybe there's more than one that will end up being that safety valve, um, especially if the quarterback's young. If it's Nick or if it's if it's Tucker, you know, you kind of I think you kind of need that. Um, that being said, kind of along those same lines, a running game is the strength. There's no doubt about it. Which of these guys is it? Victor Rosa? Is it Cam? Is it Darrell Robinson? Do you think is going to be more of that out of the backfield can kind of affect the passing game from a running back position? Why don't you go first, Pete? I think Victor's going to step up and add to his game as a pass catcher. Um, he always said that he admires Christian McCaffrey. And he, in a certain sense, ever since he's come to UConn, kind of has shown those kind of elements to his game. Uh, I can see him developing more as, as a route runner out of the backfield and, and catching balls. If he does that, it's just going to elevate the offense. It's going to elevate his game. I can definitely see that. You know, Cam Edwards didn't show too bad of hands either, you know, coming in and playing as well. I mean, I remember one one game he had a catch in the back of the end zone where he, he toe tapped that that line and he was covered. I think it was South Florida. And so he's he's shown an ability as well. Um, you know, all, any of these backs, I think, has the capability to add to the passing game coming out of the backfield. I've not seen too much of Darrell Robinson catching the ball. I do. I do know that when he hits the hole, he's got a lot of wiggle. But when he explodes off that first step, he's got a pretty good one. And uh, Mel Brown as well. I, I think uh, he's got a good first step quickness with the ball. And I could definitely see him being a mismatch on linebackers coming out of the backfield as well. So all, all four of them have capability to, to possibly impact the, the passing game. Okay. Bobby, anything to add? I, I second Pete with uh, Victor Rosa uh, statement. I, I think as, as Pete said, like he admires McCaffrey and, uh, I think he really wants to add that to his game. And I also am really excited to see Mel Brown in space. And if you can get him there, that could be really exciting for us. Okay. Well, we're not done yet. we got a few more segments to go on this big football Friday. We're going to talk about the coaching staff, what to expect uh, from Jim Mora and his boys coming up. This has been another episode of Locked On UConn. I can't tell you how much the support means that you guys would tune in for a Locked On UConn football edition show. We're gonna. This has been part one of that. Look for next Friday, part two. Remember, I want you guys to get these playoff these uh, these opening tickets again at the rent against Merrimack. So um, make sure you're paying attention to what the details are. Next week we'll we'll do a drawing on the 24th. So tune in from the to, you know on the 16th and the 23rd to make sure you are locked in on getting these UConn tickets. Go check out Locked On College Football. This has been a Football Friday podcast. Would love for you guys to check out what we have for on, on the Locked On uh, College Football podcast from NAL deals to never-ending to never ending conference realignment. Hopefully, there are some rumors about UConn will be displaying soon. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for exciting season of the gridiron. You can find a link to Locked On College Football in his description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.